sex, meditation is much better in the long run, at least. Allah who can say in the great oneness. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm, the joy of non-meditation of just being nothing to do achieve figure out or become or worry about drop everything and then sense who or what is present american buddha is awakened throw off your chains your discursivity and neurosis imaho let go of your hang-ups and live truly we're all going to die friends as we know even if we can't hardly believe it all that are born die, but who's gonna truly live? Like Zorba the Buddha, like a green Buddha on this green and growing spring, like Northern hemisphere of our planet. Ah, oh, thinking locally here in the Northern hemisphere, but also thinking globally and acting locally right here and now taking care of our own garden, our own body and mind, our own land, our own family and community, all beings that whom we're connected with, who want and need the same as we do, who suffer and are anxious and uncertain in these tumultuous times, just like us, truly feeling with them compassion, empathy, well-wishing, benevolence, inclusive, beyond distinctions and divisions. Om, Ah, Hung, the whole three worlds, it's the three Kayas. As it says in the sutras, Mahayana sutras, that's the meaning of the Kalashas arising, the transcendent of wisdom. Ah, oh, relaxed at ease. First attention and at ease. Just sitting, just breathing, just being aware, attentive, lucidly present, incandescently present, mindful, rather mindlessly sleepwalking through life, having all kinds of so-called accidents. Just sitting, natural body is Buddha's body, Namanakaya, perfect embodiment, dig it. Physical sensations, so simple, so delightful, so freeing. Just this is it right now, dance with it. Second natural breath and energy is Buddha's breath and energy, Sambhogakaya, pure enjoyment, pure energy, spontaneous flow, let it go. Let things come and go, let be. That's the secret of letting go, friends, letting be. The great equanimity, the great spiritual detachment. Put the gear shift in neutral and just let the engine sing without driving your wheels, your karmic wheels anywhere for the moment. Just sitting, just breathing, and third, just being as you already are. Natural mind is natural heart mind is Buddhist heart mind. Dharmakaya, ultimate reality. Naturalness is the way, the truth and the light, the life. Not putting your best foot forward, inching forward like a crab or a boxer in defensive crouch. Striding right into the gleaming waves. Because we can swim. Because we can dance with whatever it is. Because we know this too shall pass, whatever it is. These feelings going up and down, too shall pass. Here's a secret pith instruction we need to hear. No feeling is forever. Try to remember that when your mood is oppressive. No feeling lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever, friends, even the mountains and the oceans. But that's another story, another perspective. On geologic time, so much bigger than our local mayfly human time. Four score and seven years ago, I was born 
Now I'm older than my grandfathers were when I remember them. What a magic show. What a theater, Shakespearean theater, tragic comedy. It's so rich, so delightful. So just breathing, just sitting, just being aware, enjoying the show. Imaho, wondrous, Eureka, amazing. The best show, the only show in town. This breath, only breath, aware of it and letting it go. Riding the breath like surfing, the waves gently moving in and out. No separate board or rider, but it's just a metaphor. Maybe we're more like the bubbles on the cresting wave. Part of it, yet momentarily mm, differentiable. Yes, or like God's pseudopods, false appendages. One hand inside all the different Muppets or all the different fingers of a glove. One hand, five fingers, Imaho. Awareness, aware of awareness, just sitting, just breathing, just being incandescently present and attentive, seeing through or momentary, dreamlike, illusory, ownerless phenomena and mind stuff, phenomena, imaho, wondrous, amazing, eureka, hallelujah, amen, imaho. And joy, the joy of contemplative sweetness, the joy of meditation.
Om Madra Sattva Samaya Manapalaya Madra Sattva page mantra page mm, Zogchen prayer book there it is Om oh, Madra Sattva Samaya Manapalaya Madra Sattva Dena Bhati Zadrita Mebhava Sutokaya Mebhava Subhokaya Mebhava Anuradha Mebhava Sava Siddhi Mebhava Sava Kama Sutsa Medita Sri Yakuru Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sava Tata Gata Vajra Mame Monsa Vajri Bhava Ma Samaya Safa O diamond being, Vajrasattva, like a mirror to our own original face, our own soul, our own karma, which is oneself. Purify us, purify all. Transform us in the world, transforming all. Transmit your wisdom, love, and dynamic, liberating energy to us. So we may be vessels of your enlightening activity in this benighted world. Om Vajrasattva Hung. As the Jumipache says in the Vajrasattva section of his short Dujum Treasure Nundro, now nakedly regard the primordial face of Vajrasattva, of the purification Buddha. Comment, gaze nakedly into emptiness and recognize the recognizer, awareness, the original face of Vajra being, diamond-like being, Vajrasattva. Assume your Buddha seat, VJ. VJs of the world, assume your Buddha seat as you already are, Imho, way to go, Eureka, hallelujah, amen. And imbibe the nectar, the amrita, the elixir of contemplative sweetness. Will the juice of the fruit fruition vehicle, Tantra, Vajrayana, being there while getting there every step of the way, being here while getting there every step of the way, here and there, oneself and other, samsara, nirvana, inseparable from the tantric Vajrayana perspective. One taste, one mandala, one samaya, one family, one circle, which is the ultimate sphere four or five dimensional in one's heart and all around rest in the center of that Yamaha Vajrasapo
Oh, money, pay me, oh, oh, money, oh, money, pay me, oh, 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 money, pay me, oh, oh, money, pay me, oh, oh, Ben, can we see His Holiness Drukshan's Ruv Chai's prayer, please? And then the Millennium Prayer, thank you. I call on you, my teachers, regard us with compassion. I sincerely wish to receive your blessings, encouragements, guidance, teachings, and inspiration. Please regard your child's longing desire kindly. Please turn this way. Bless us to have a steady and smooth heart and mind. So for this life and those to follow as a true practitioner in accord with the special intention to help others, bodhicitta may be spontaneously present. Bodhicitta, noble heart, mind, awakenedness. May I be able to benefit all measureless numbers of beings throughout the universe, seen and unseen. Without the toxic stains of a competitive mind, without the intoxicating liquor of anger and lust, irritation, impatience, and reactivity. May I be able to practice the calming, peaceful, and soothing Dharma, the healing Dharma, that which upholds us all, like the good earth that we walk on, that embraces us, that everything depends on to grow and be nourished. Through listening and thinking and examining and reflecting, especially about those teachings I practice, may I be able to precisely determine their definitive meaning. Raising the flag of ultimate practice accomplishment, may I be able to accomplish great service to the Dharma and to all sentient beings. This is the way I pray all the time, and I request all of you to support my prayers. And now Kempo's dedication prayer, please, and the Millennium Prayer at the end of the packet, Ben. May the light of the Buddha's precious teachings remain for ages to come, the, fun, the basis for every single kind of benefit and happiness, worldly and spiritual, relative and ultimate. May all the supreme holders of these precious teachings who uphold its living truth agree to live for eons and their lotus feet stand firm in this Saha world, this floating, tenuous world, Saha. 
And so may the sun of altruism and well-being, benevolence and love in all its blazing splendor, shine the brilliant light of the study and practice and accomplishment of Buddha Dharma throughout every corner of the universe. May we be open to it. May we invite it in. May we include others. May we share it freely without proselytizing. May we pay it forward, paying back our teachers and benefactors and parents by paying it forward to the next generations. May there be peace and harmony in this world and an end to war and violence, poverty, hunger and oppression, inequality, greed, cruelty, pandemics, famines, drought, droughts, earthquakes, all kinds of natural disasters. May all be free from fear, harm, danger, anxiety, and insecurity. May we better prepare ourselves for the natural calamities that may befall us. May we heal, harmonize, and rebalance our endangered environment and atmosphere. And may we all together complete this splendid spiritual journey all the way home. One beloved community, one circle, one family, one sangha, one satsang all the way home, all together. And I bow to the Buddha, the light, the divine in your seat. Don't overlook them. I love chanting these ancient, timeless prayers, aspirations, affirmations, requests, humbling ourselves, even bowing down and surrendering to what is, open to what is, dancing with life, whatever it is, to whatever tune is being played. We can move, we can groove to the beat, even jazz, no limits. Contemplative prayer is such an important part of the spiritual life for many of us. If you like to read about these things, Father Thomas Keating, a late American saint, his book, Christian Contemplative Prayer, shows the way. It's very much like Buddhist awareness meditation, not praying for something or to someone, but contemplation or just awareness or presence of God, just being in the presence, Christian centering prayer. It's a wonderful practice beyond isms, religions, and schisms. There's a lot of prayer going down in the old world in traditional Buddhism, less so in the new world with our secular mindfulness and scientific approach to Buddhist psychology and healing and it, efficiency, but in the devotional path, there's a lot to be reaped of emotional wisdom, emotional intelligence, opening the heart, not just awakening and illumining and feeding the mind. So I love these prayers and chants and it's an important part of my practice. Of course, it's not necessary for everybody. Maybe some people like physical Practice better like yoga, tai chi, qigong, walking meditation, or exercise with awareness, or non-competitive sports or gardening, or handcrafts or arts. Letting the muse come through you, stepping aside, just like in meditation. Any questions today, please? We do have our Q&A session coming up to Saturdays from now. You can register, sign up for that through the Dzogchen Center website. And our last master class next weekend, the last of the series of nine over the school year, month by month, called Dancing with Life, the joy of contemplative sleep weakness. Get your questions in folks, anybody? I got a leftover here, but it's better fresh. Don't be fresh, Ben. <laughs> Respect your olders. <laughs> uh, 
All well, right, going once, going twice. Everything must be very, very, very clear. Yes, as always. As always. It's so clear that we overlook it. We see right through it. We don't even see what's right under our noses. Go on. Um, ben, tight ship here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> here we go. Oh, oh, we got, here we go. Okay, we got some fresh ones. We're good. Okay. Hmm. Can memories be skillful or are they a form of grasping? Mm, good question. Dory. Dory, I remember you. Mm. Am I attached to you or is that helpful, Dory? Or maybe both. Maybe both. Of course, nostalgia or living in the past ain't, you know, the idea. But it's one gear. We can try that sometimes on our ride. But it may be a little over attached rather than, you know, looking forward. We're allowed to look back. We even have a rear view mirror and other things. Collections of pictures and home movies and, of course, the theater of our memory. But it is slightly a form of attachment, but everything is. So don't discriminate. Also, you can remember to remember what you're doing right now. That's a mindfulness practice. So it's not just in the past because the past is just in one's mind anyway. Where else would it be? It's present awareness remembering. So memory is just one more awareness, form of awareness. It's fine. As long as we don't overdo it by living in the past and not keeping our eyes forward, you know, our our this present step and our next step and so on. But I know what you're asking. And for the sake, you know, of all of us, let me just think about it a little more. Memory is an important function. If we didn't remember ourselves, we would lose our self-identity. We wouldn't know who we were, where we came from, where we parked our car, what our you know, we used to say what our address is, name, rank, and serial number. I guess now we wouldn't remember our social media handle, our uh, cash card code, you know, and all the other things we might need to remember to function in life. We wouldn't remember the birth dates of our mate or our anniversaries, and you know how troublesome that might become, or the birth dates of our children or parents or grandchildren, or in some cases, great, great grandchildren. So memory is an important part of the mind, but living in our the past or the, our head too much or being too nostalgia, you know, maybe probably overdoing it, that would be a, a attachment because it ties up our energy from experiencing fully the now and even looking ahead or creative expression or planning and uh, new things. Of course, we all talk about living here and now. So in that sense, the more present you are, the less you need to rely on memory and more you can be rather than being the identity that you have strung together with all these memories that you identify with, like my childhood, my upbringing, my family, my place, my country, my role, my gender, my this and that. If you take memory away, then what? Who or what are we? Are we still a, a being? Are we still a male, a female, or other? Or are we just being itself, which is closer to the, quote, goal of just being? So as usual, the middle way, it's kind of both. And not being overly attached to the past, but also not being overattached to the future in our fantasies and imagination. You can also be living in, you know, the future and ignoring the present and the step you're making, the place you're sitting. Maybe it's good to remember to sing the song, love the one you're with, even if that's just oneself or the eternal companion, as some call it, which it refers to the higher power or your higher side self. Good question, Dory Dor of New Hampshire, I believe. Excellent memory, Lama. Last night, 
I saw a movie. Excuse me for being a you know patriarch and a male dominated male guy. I saw the father starring Anthony Hopkins as somebody elder father, I guess he's suffering from Alzheimer's. And his daughter, actress Miss Coleman, can't remember her first name. She's played various queens and things, that wonderful actress. And it was all about him losing his mind, his memory. And we were too while watching it. It really invaded my mind. And I came out of there and I saw a clock. And the clock was five hours ahead. And I was like, I was as confused as Anthony Hopkins was in the movie. It was funny because he invaded, invaded my mind. And I was like more open to things being like disconnected because it's memory that holds things together. And hold means grasp and attach. So when you let go of everything, it's like gravity. Woo! Everything would just float or fly off the planet, as we like to say as kids. Like in the space movies where there's no gravity, people are just fl floating, right? We've all seen this. So we need a certain amount of attachment to keep ourselves and our lives intact and together and take care of ourselves and each other but not overly attached. And, you know, there's a difference between cra insatiable craving and just grasping the point or self-mastery, having a grip on one's life. Not a death grip, but grip, some traction on the path. The Fawz, excellent movie, by the way. I bet you Ms. Coleman and Sir Anthony are nominated or even win Oscars for it, for what that's worth. Anyway, it made me think a lot about how memory and identity are so tied together. Questions, please. I think we have time uh, quickly for one more, Lama. Um, we had a couple about dreams. First question, how important are nighttime dreams? And then going along with that, um, gaining awareness of in dreams is karma generated by acts, actions in dreams. Let's separate those. First, how important are nighttime dreams? They're as important as they are to you, maybe. Um, they're just dreams. You know, it depends on what way you look at it. Um, you can learn a lot from them. It's said that dreams are the windows, like the eyes, windows to the soul. Sometimes they can give you premonitions of what's going to happen, like Lincoln's famous dream of being assassinated that he had a few days before he died. You can read about it in history or other things. Premonition dreams. Um, you can get messages in dreams that are helpful. But then, you know, in general, we say, dreamlike meaning like not as real as this reality but from a tibetan buddhist point of view from a like mm, cosmic point of view the dreams are not that different than the daydream that we experience every day it just depends on what you're you know discussing like if a tiger attacked me last night in my dream maybe it was a nightmare you know maybe it wasn't i mean who knows what happened maybe Maybe the tiger put me on its back and rode me off like some of the Mahasiddhas of India are depicted who have mastered their own, you know, fierce natures. So who knows? But in general, if the tiger attacked and clawed me and hurt me in the dream, it doesn't necessarily carry over to when I wake up in bed in the morning. But if a tiger, you know, clawed and attacked me yesterday in the daydream, I probably still have wounds and even need a healing attention today. So there's different levels of thinking about this, teaching about like a dream, like a mirage. In general, if you can practice lucid dreaming, Tibetan dream yoga, lucid dreaming, awake in, in the dream and still be asleep, but awake and know you're dreaming while still being asleep, awakening while still being asleep into the dream and being self-aware, then you can manipulate it. You're more like the magician rather than at effect. You know, you're more like causal rather than just the effect of the subconscious and unconscious stirrings that are making the dream perceptions. So that's a way to 
practice or gain self mastery and wisdom and even good karma through the dream. So that brings us to the next subject and we're running out of time. So I'm going quick. You can read a lot about dreams. You know, there's a lot to say. I have a whole um, CD from Sounds True, which you can probably stream it now called Tibetan Dream Yoga about this and how to go to sleep and what to visualize and what to say or chant and how to wake up in the dream and who can help you and so on. But if you act in a dream, there's a karma too, because of intention and mind and, you know, body karma and all, but it's not the same as in the, the daydream. Again, if you shot and killed, and I'm just using hyperbole here, a character to make a point. If you shot and killed, like, I don't know what is a endangered species among tigers, a white tiger. If you shot, you know, and killed some endangered species in the dream, it's not really a crime, if you do it in daytime, it's a crime. Because in the dream, it's not as real. It's not a crime in everyday, you know, modern law here on this planet, or let's just say in our country. In the dream, it's not a crime. But in the daydream, it is a crime. So crime is also relative to place and time and so on. But you know what I'm saying. So there is karma in the dream. If you have intention and action and results, that's cause and effect There's karma. Like you might just dream it again. Or who knows, you might get arrested in the dream. You might get fined or imprisoned in the dream for committing that crime. But anyway, you asked about karma. You can create karma in dreams. That's why we try to wake up in the dream, know we're dreaming and then play with it and do positive things like gain merits, like help people, like feed the, all the hungry in the world. Since we have magic powers in dreams, we're less encumbered by our daydream, physical and mental reality. So I, I hope you, that's somewhat satisfying. You can study more about this. There is karma you can make in dreams, certainly, just like in the daydream. And Dreams may or may not be that different than the daydream that we live in or some other states of consciousness, like some kind of dreams or experiences you have in meditation, uh, near death experiences, you know, other states of consciousness also have their karmic repercussions. That's why we use the word bardo, not just for the state after death and before rebirth, bardo, the intermediate stage the in-between, literally, the passage, the in-between bardo. Not just for after death, but after birth also is a bardo, the bardo of this life, this daydream, the bardo of meditation consciousness, which is sort of after your day life and before your next, you know, starting of life. There's like a gap when you're meditating. It's a bardo. Thank you, Lama. We're hitting the bardo of our session. Okay. I'll see you with the singles bardo tonight, young man. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, for, for tuning in today. Again, we have a, a bunch of wonderful events coming up. Um, next Saturday is the final Masterclass with Lama, Dancing with Life, the Joy of Meditation and Contemplative Sweetness. And then following that, the next weekend, Saturday, April 24th, we have an Ask the Lama session. And on May Day, May 1st, we got a live virtual day retreat so tune in and please, if you find this helpful, consider donating to the Dzogchen Foundation or becoming a member. All the information's in our chat. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much, Lama. Thank you. Tu a wonderful day, everybody. Kadin Che, as we Tu-chi say. Che. Thank you. Good night and good luck. <laughs>